In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at how we can create a custom color picker in SwiftUI, and it's going to look like this over here. So we have this bar over here with plenty of colors, and if you select a color, it's going to decrease the opacity by about 50%, and it's going to make it a bit larger. And of course, it's going to pick the color that you select. Now we can select any one of these colors, and you can edit this bar to look any way you like. But for this example, we'll make it look like this. It's just a bunch of circles. And we can also scroll to pick a different color, such as black or green. And again, the color is up to you, but I'm going to show you how to create this very simple implementation in SwiftUI. So the very first thing you want to do is click on your main folder and hold Command plus N so we can create a new SwiftUI view. Then go ahead and name it Custom Color Picker and click on Enter. Now, the very first thing we have to do is create a binding variable at var selected caller, which will be of type caller. And the reason we have to do this is because we want to make sure that we can use the value that we select inside this view and creating a binding means we can read it and write to it. And of course, we will get an error here that we need to create a constant for the binding value. And inside here, we can just type in dot blue. So that's going to be the one that we selected in the preview. Up next, we have to go ahead and create a list of colors that we want to display to the user. And it's going to just be called colors of type array of color. And that's going to equal all of the colors that you want. And it's actually a lot for me to write out. So I'm just going to copy and paste in all the colors I had from earlier. So as you can see, dot red, dot yellow, dot orange, and just replace that with the colors you want to display to the user. And we still get an error here because I forgot to include the selected caller tag. So go ahead and fix that by adding selected caller. And then we can move on. Now let's go ahead and close the sidebar for now. And inside here, the first thing we want to do is create a scroll view with the horizontal scrolling. So dot horizontal. And inside the scroll view, we need to go ahead and create an H stack which is going to iterate over each one of the colors. So for each, and we need to provide the colors and the ID, which is backslash dot self, since each color is always going to be unique. And that's going to return each color in this list. So we're just going to create a small circle with the foreground color of color. And as you can see, we already have a rainbow of colors. And the frame is going to be set to 45 by 45 without an alignment. So we can just get rid of that part. And as you can see, it's going off the screen because we've defined a scroll view. That means the user at any point of this program can scroll to the right to see more colors. Now the opacity is going to be if the color is the selected color, then we're going to go ahead and say it should be at 0.5, half the opacity, just to show that it's actually selected. Otherwise, if it's not selected, it's going to be set at its full opacity of 100%. Now we need to also provide a scale effect, which will use the same Elvis operator. If the caller is the selected caller, we're going to return 1.1, so it's slightly bigger. Otherwise return 1.0, which is the regular size. And an on tap gesture, and that's just going to make sure that the selected caller is the caller that we tap on. Now let's go ahead and style the H stack. So first we want to give it some padding, followed by a background of dot thin material and a corner radius of 20 with a padding of dot horizontal. So you get this really nice background in the bar. And let's make sure that says horizontal. So that takes care of creating the custom color picker. And as you could see, it really took nothing to do it and you can add as many colors as you want. But let's go ahead and use it in the content view. So inside here, we can minimize this sidebar and get started with creating a state variable. So at state private var selected caller of type caller is going to equal dot blue. And that's just going to be the first caller the user sees when we log on to our program. And inside here, let's go ahead and create a V stack with our custom caller picker. So custom caller picker. And the selected caller is going to be a binding variable, which is bound to the selected caller. So immediately you'll see that we will have it in the preview with the selected caller being dot blue. And if we change this to dot red, it's going to update in the preview to dot red. Then let's go ahead and add a spacer. And we're going to add a circle to preview which caller we are selecting. 
So circle dot frame, which will have a frame of 300 by 300, and we do not need the alignment. Then we want the foreground color, of course, to be set to the selected color, and we're going to add a spacer so that it goes to the center of the screen. And finally, I just want to display what color it is. So we're going to add a text field or just a text box and interpolate by adding selected color dot description. And it's going to have a font with the system size of 40. So as you can see, we have the color picker at the top and we have the color that's being used in the center of the screen. So all we have to do now is go ahead and run the program and test it out on a real emulator. So you'll notice that we have the same color picker from earlier and we can scroll between it. And it doesn't matter which color we pick on, it's always going to update it and it's going to show it inside our content view. So that was a very simple way to create a color picker. And you can do this in many different ways. You can create different rows, you can create different hues. Just make sure you have an array that the user can select from and Preferably, you have some way of displaying to the user that they've actually selected a color, such as blue. But with that being said, guys, that's actually all I wanted to show you in today's lesson. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.